Here are five of the worst allergy medications you can get without a prescription and some potential alternatives to consider. My name is Dr. Rubin. I'm a board certified allergist. This list is based off of the relative effectiveness and safety profile. And if you want to learn more about allergies, hit that follow button for more information. At number five, if you have allergies, it often affects your eyes and creates redness. And some people may go over the counter to get eye drops like Visine that have at the end of the word Zolane in the active ingredient. And that is something that can constrict blood vessels in the eye to reduce the redness. The problem is, is that you could have a rebound redness where it gets worse as you use that medication. So it's better for allergic conjunctivitis patients to consider ketodafin or olopatadine as their active ingredients to act as an antihistamine or mastel stabilizing agent. At number four, I have pseudoephedrine, also known as Sudafed, which is an oral decongestant sold behind the counter. You have to show your ID to a pharmacist in order to get it. You don't need a prescription. It is a good oral decongestant. However, for many people who have heart disease, diabetes, or thyroid disease, you may have to be careful on this medication and not overuse it because it could raise your blood pressure and cause cardiovascular effects. It could also cause irritability and headaches as well. And if you're considering an alternative, you could try combination combination oral pseudoephedrine with an antihistamine built in together that may provide some additional relief for some people. At number three, I have nasal decongestant sprays such as oxymetazoline, also known as Afrin, as well as phenylephrine. These sprays are effective for short-term relief to decrease the congestion in the nose. However, I put it here because people often overuse it. And if you're using it for three to five days without using a nasal steroid spray like Flonase, you could run the risk of a rebound congestion, also known as rhinitis medicamentosa, and the medication doesn't work quite as effectively. At number two, I have diphenhydramine, also known as Benadryl. This is a first generation antihistamine that also has anticholinergic properties to it. So people can have all sorts of side effects on it, especially taken at higher doses and can potentially be life-threatening if you take too much of it. This is a medication that can cause dry mouth, urinary retention, constipation. It can make you really tired. 10 to 15% of people will become very aggressive with it. And we have newer antihistamines that are second generation that are less likely to cause those side effects because they don't have those anticholinergic properties or cross the blood-brain barrier to cause you to become tired. These are medications like Zyrtec, Zizol, Claritin, and Allegra that you could consider in lieu of Benadryl. And number one, we have oral phenylephrine, which is an oral decongestant that's still sold over the counter, even though an advisory committee from the FDA ruled that this medication is not better than a placebo in treating a stuffy nose. If you need to have quick relief, the nasal sprays that I talked about earlier are going to be much better for short-term use or for long-term use, you could consider nasal sprays like an intranasal steroid like fluticasone, mometasone, or you can consider something called azelastine for, as a nasal spray that would do a much better job providing potentially longer term relief. And if you are struggling with this, please see your local allergist to help you out if you're having issues with allergies.